This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to do something pretty cool where we have a list of products and then we can purchase the products. And we are going to be using the Stripe checkout. However, there's going to be a little twist. Normally, when we do a Stripe checkout, that redirects us to a checkout page hosted by Stripe. But in this episode, we're going to look how we can embed this within our own application. So instead of getting redirected to another service, it looks like it's still within our application. We can fill out the card information and then click pay. It'll process it and then it'll send us back to our application and I just have it listing out an order here. But as you can see that the order status is paid and we're going to be doing this without using any webhooks from the Stripe side calling over to our application. Instead, once the payment is successful, then we will receive the Stripe checkout session ID and then we can look it up to verify that the status is paid. And so the neat part about this is if you are already using the Stripe checkout, then this process won't be too different than what you are already doing. And as a disclaimer, this is currently in beta that allows you to embed the Stripe checkout within your own application, but it's something that you are able to get early access to if you submit a contact request. However, from what it does sound like, this feature should be released within the month of October. And you can also pair this nicely with the two shopping cart episodes where we set up the shopping cart and then we go through the process of checking out with Stripe Checkout. You'll also be able to use this for subscriptions, but if you are using subscriptions, then you will need to use the webhooks just so you're able to handle that recurring charge. And I do have some episodes on that topic as well. So to get started, I am using a newer version of Rails. It is the Rails 7 One Release Candidate 1. However, this is going to work back for really any version of Rails that supports the Stripe gem. So I wouldn't foresee any issues implementing this in a Rails 6 or a Rails 7 application. But we will start off with generating a scaffold. We'll call this our product. We'll have a name and then we'll have a price with a decimal and we'll make it a precision of eight with a scale of two. And that's all we're really going to need because I want to make this as simple as possible on the setup bit so we can focus more on the Stripe integration. And so I'm also going to generate a model and this is going to be for the orders. We'll have a session underscore ID. And then let's also have a Stripe checkout ID. The session ID, you'll typically make your user ID where a user has many orders. But in this episode, I'm just going to use the session ID that we get from Rails. That's going to be pretty persistent until you clear out the cookies. We can then also have a status. It will make this an integer. And for the status, it's really going to be the different states for the order. So I have a default of zero in here. And in the order model, we'll have an enum with a status. And we'll just say that we'll have a pending is set to zero. So that'll be our default state. And then we'll have a paid is equal to one. And in the DB seeds, just so we have some records to work with, I'll just paste in here where we are creating three different products. We'll have a laptop, camera, and a tablet for various prices. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and migrate our database. And then we can also run the Rails DB seed to see that database with the three products. And then in the config routes.rb, let's go ahead and set everything up that we'll need within here. On our products index page, we'll have a link where the user can make a purchase. And again, with the implementation of the previous episodes, you can have a shopping cart here instead. However, the overall idea of making it work with the Stripe checkout is the same. So when the user clicks on a product to purchase, let's take them to a resource and then a checkout path. And we only really need the show page on here. Once the user is then checking out, 
and they make their payment, that's going to give us a return URL. So let's create another endpoint and we'll just call this the payments. And again, this is only going to have a show action. We can generate these controllers. We'll just generate the checkouts and then we'll also generate the payments. And so before we interact with these two different controllers, let's go ahead and go into the views for the products and on the index, let's add in an additional column where we can then make it a purchase link. This purchase link, instead of going to a product path, we'll go to a checkout path and we can just pass in the ID of the product. So again, here we would have a shopping cart or something that we would be passing in instead. Or in the case of the previous episode, we had a current cart helper, which grabbed the current cart of the user. But regardless, the user will be able to click this purchase link and then that'll take us to our checkout controller. Within the checkout controller, we'll have our show action. And this is where we're going to start interacting with the Stripe gem. So what we need to do is we need to add the Stripe gem into our gem file. And we'll do that with a bundle add Stripe. And then we also need to edit our credentials file or we need to pass in some environment variables. And I'll just paste in here the different keys that we'll need. We'll need the publishable key and also the secret key. And so now that we have our Stripe, publishable key and secret key, which are all available on Stripe's website under the developer options, we can go ahead and create an initializer for our Stripe gem. Within the initializers, I'll just create a stripe.rb, then we'll call the stripe.api underscore key. We'll set this equal to the rails.application.credentials. And then we can dig through to get the stripe and then also the secret key. And because I am using a later version of Stripe, we're able to specify the API version. And for this API version, we're going to be using the 2023-08-16. And that's the latest one as of the recording of this episode. But then we also need to add in something else. We need to add in the embedded underscore checkout underscore beta, and we'll set it to version two. Now this may change once this feature is officially released. So be sure to check the documentation for the embedded checkout to see if this is still required or if you just need to use a newer API version. And then under our views within the layouts, within our application.html.erb, I'm going to copy out the JavaScript include tag and I'm just going to paste in the JavaScript endpoint. We can pretty much leave it like this, except we need to remove this defer true. Otherwise, what you may find is that it'll work most of the time. However, if someone is on that checkout page and refreshes, then it's not going to auto reload. And so now we're ready to interact with the Stripe gem. Within our checkouts controller, we'll have a session and we'll set this equal to the Stripe checkout session and then we'll create a new instance of it. Within here, a lot of things are going to be very similar where you have a line items and this is going to be an array of hashes. We'll just have one item for this case and then we need to have our price data. We'll set our currency and for my case, I'll set it to USD and then we can have our product data and the product data. We don't need to include too much in here. We really just need a name and we want to get the name of our product. And so I'm going to create a private method and this will be for our product where we'll have an instance variable for our product double pipe equals just so we're memoizing this so we can use it multiple times without making additional calls. And then we'll just do a product dot find by the params. And if you remember, we set it to the ID after this, while we're still within the price data, we can set the unit underscore amount and we want to set this equal to our product dot price and then we'll multiply it by 100 because we do need to convert this over into cents and we also need to make sure it's an integer after that we can set the quantity for this line item and the quantity will just be one so now outside of the line items we can set a mode and our mode is going to be a payment we can set a ui underscore mode and this is different but it's going to be embedded for the embedded checkout. And then normally you'll have a success URL or a cancel URL. However, in this case, we need a return underscore URL. And this return URL 
we're going to take to our payments underscore URL, but we need to pass back a session underscore ID. And this is going to be something that Stripe is going to automatically fill out for us. So we need to use mustaches and then in all caps, have a checkout underscore session underscore ID. However, if we just leave it like this, then Rails is going to try to escape this. And we don't want that for this particular URL. It does need to have the mustaches included as you see here. So in order to get around that, we can call the CGI dot unescape and just wrap the whole URL within there. And then it'll work as we would expect. And so basically what's going to happen is that the user is going to click the purchase for a product. It's going to take them to the checkouts controller, the show action. And on the show page is where we are going to want to render the checkout page. However, once the user has completed the checkout, then they're going to get redirected to our return URL. The return URL isn't really going to have any kind of context of this checkout session. So we're going to create and persist an order record just so we can look it up later. So we'll have our session underscore ID. And for this, I'm just going to use the session dot ID. But if you are using authentication or something, then you would do something like a current user dot orders dot create. And then you would just pass in that Stripe checkout ID. And that'll be the instance variable session dot ID. But because we don't have any authentication set up for this application, I'm simply just going to do the Stripe checkout ID is equal to the instance variable ID. And we'll just grab the Rails session and store that instead. And now that we're done with that controller, let's go down and create the show.html.erb. And this is where we're going to need a few different things. And it's going to be a lot easier if we just make it into a stimulus controller. So we'll have a data controller. And let's call this controller Stripe. We're also going to need a few different things. So I'm going to have a data Stripe public key, and we'll make this a value. We'll set this equal to our Rails at application dot credentials, and we'll dig through the Stripe, and then we'll get our publishable underscore key. Typically, you would have a meta tag with the content for this public key, but because we don't really need it on every page. I'm just going to add it in as a value on this stimulus controller. And we need one more bit of information. So we'll have a data stripe and we need our client secret. That's going to be required in order to display our checkout embedded session. So we'll just call this a client secret. And it's again going to be a value. And we're going to get this value from our session instance variable and then the client underscore secret. Once we have that done, we can close out our div and then that's all we need to do within the view. Within our terminal, we can generate that stimulus controller. And again, it's just called Stripe. And so let's go ahead and get our static values. We had our public key and that's a string. And then we also had the client secret and that's also a string. We can also declare our Stripe is equal to Stripe. And this may seem a little strange here, but if you remember within the application HTML file, we were including this Stripe JavaScript. And so part of the reason why we removed that deferred true is because we're going to be using it directly within the stimulus controller. And so we do need to pass in a few different options. We need to first pass in this dot public key value. And then we also need to pass in a hash and we need to set the betas here. And again, once this feature is released, we may not need this, but we need to include for now the embedded checkout beta one. And so then we can create our checkout and we're going to set this equal to this dot stripe dot init embedded checkout. And then we can pass in a few different options. And really the only thing that we need here is a client secret. And we'll set that equal to this dot client secret value. But the problem here it's that this may not happen instantaneously. So we do need to make this an asynchronous call on our connect function. And then we can await for this embedded checkout. We can then call this dot checkout dot mount. And then we can just mount it to this dot element. And this dot element is going to be our div tag where we initialize the stimulus controller. 
And one additional thing that we need to do within here, because it really is just best practice, whenever we are working with any kind of service, is to have some kind of destructor. So before we navigate off to a different page, we can call this dot checkout and we can destroy it. This will remove the checkout. So if the user needed to return to their cart to make some changes, or if they've completed the purchase of a product and want to purchase something else, then they won't have any issues and won't need to refresh their browser in order to create another checkout session. Oh, and one little issue here is that when we're initializing our Stripe, this does need to be plural for betas. However, again, this whole bit may not be needed once this feature is officially released. So we can go ahead and test this out. We can go to our list of products. We'll click purchase on the camera. That takes us to our checkout page. And now we see the embedded checkout. We can fill out the card information and then we'll click pay at the bottom. This will process, we'll get the green mark, and then it redirects us to the payments controller show page, which we haven't created yet. However, you'll see in the URL, we are at the payments controller, and then we have the parameter session underscore ID, and then the session ID of that Stripe checkout session. And so within the payments controller, we'll have our show action. And within here, we can look up our order. We'll set it to an order dot find by, and let's find it by our session underscore ID. And we'll make that our session dot ID. And then we can also look it up by the Stripe checkout ID. And that's gonna be our params and the session underscore ID. Our Stripe session, we can set equal to our Stripe checkout session and we want to retrieve off of this session ID because it's good that we are being redirected to the show page, but that doesn't really confirm that the order has been accepted yet. So then we can basically do a check if this Stripe session, and we can check the status. If that is equal to complete, then we know that our order has been paid for. Otherwise, our order is basically still pending. If the order has been paid, then we can basically process any other business logic, email notifications, or whatever else that we would need to do. Otherwise, we know that the user has come to this page, but it's still not quite checked out yet. It could be a delay on Stripe's end or some other issue. Regardless, we'll create a show page and we'll just call this a successful payment. And then for now, let's just inspect our order. So now this is pretty much feature complete. We can go back and we could redo all of this or I'm just gonna refresh the page and then it should still take it in because we have that previous session ID. And we do have one little issue here is that we can't look it up by that session ID. So let's come back in and we'll just make it a string by making our session ID a string, which again, you probably won't have a problem with this if you are using authentication before a user can check out. But in our case, it is something that we do have to take into consideration. So I'll refresh it and then we'll see our successful payment. And then here is our order. It's been marked as paid because we were able to look up that Stripe checkout session, retrieve it and check the status. The status was complete. And the other status, if it wasn't completed, would be open. So you can handle some logic there if you want for the open but most of the time just doing an else here would be sufficient. So again, at the time of this recording, this feature isn't really released yet. It is something that you can access by making a contact request and providing your account ID. But overall, I really like it because it still gives the same look and feel as our application, while also giving the user confidence if they know what Stripe is, that you're not entering in your credit card information on that person's website. Instead, this is really just all one big iframe. And just to make sure that we are able to navigate to this checkout page, just by clicking on it, we know that works, but we can also refresh our page on here and then see it also still works, which is important to take into consideration as to not confuse the users. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.